Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining. Here we have a live webcam view of Old Faithful. People gathered to watch it go up. There was a magnitude, I thought it was a 4.7. I believe it was downgraded to a magnitude 4.1 earthquake uh, near Stanley, Idaho. The numbers are still going up. 76 people reported feeling this earthquake. One person in Salmon reported feeling this earthquake. It was also reportedly felt in Boise, Idaho. And we'll look at some of the numbers counts. Stanley reported 12. We got 2 in Loman. 5 in um, Meridena. Meridin, sorry. Boise, 24. Three there and uh, Ketchum was five and three more in that location. I'm pretty sure it was originally a 4.7. Um, here we got 4.45, 4.34, another 4.34, another 4.45. They decided on a 4.1. And we got a 4.06, 4 4.01, 4.28, 4.44, 4.23, 4.17, 4.15, um, etc. There's only three felt reports on EMSE. They too had it higher, but I noticed when they downgrade earthquakes on USGS EMC, or EMSC often follows suit. This report here says it was a quick jolt, short duration. All it said here is felt in Stanley, Idaho. I noticed, but my friend sitting next to me did not. And that was in uh, Pocatello, Idaho. There has been 67 earthquakes in the last week in this location. Yeah, the largest looks like a 4.1. They have had um, some large earthquakes since that um, 6.5 they had on March 31st. Here's the location. And I put on here that it was downgraded. I believe it was a 4.7. How many others saw that as a 4.7? Here we got the Sawtooth Fault Zone in Idaho. And then down here is the Snake River Plateau. USGS says it's not related, but I believe that it is. So the 4.7 there, and this is Yellowstone here. The red lines are the uplift that USGS, I was able to find um, the miles of uplift from 2015. So if and whenever... Yellowstone decides to go, you would definitely see it from the space station. This is the ninth aftershock of a magnitude 4.0 or greater since March 31st. The largest aftershock was uh, right after that uh, 6.5, which was a magnitude 4.8. Here's the location of that 6.5. And right down here is today's earthquake of a 4.1 or 4.7, whichever you decide. This here is the monitor from Norris Junction. This is that 4.1 or 4.7 earthquake as it came in there at Norris. And there's its signature. I'll bring it across for you so you can see it. You got a P wave on there. The P wave is the first wave of the earthquake that travels directly through the earth and second comes the S wave. We also have another one here marked in red at about 1430. There's its signature. There was a 3.0 at 1449. So this earthquake is not being reported and there's its signature. And then we got another, what they call blobs of magma that came into the system. We got another earthquake here. Very small, little microquake. 
at um, 16, 17. Let me close this out. And we got another, oh, harmonic tremors. Yeah, this is when you got magma on the move. Screw waves. And again, this is the monitor from Norris Junction. Here we have the monitor that comes from Lake Butte, which is at Yellowstone Lake. And here we have that earthquake. You can see hot gases came up. And we'll pull it over. Yeah, it lasted quite a while. It shook up the caldera there at Yellowstone. Um, this lighter color is a line of melt. Uh, melt, basically what you can think about is a sponge. Think of the pockets of rock like the little holes in a sponge. As the heat rises up, um, these little pockets of rock melt. Not all rocks melt at the same temperature. So you'll get a line of melt, which is higher up than the deeper magma. Like I said, because not all rocks melt at the same temperature. Definitely been vibrating, definitely been having uh, magma on the move. And remember Yellowstone Lake, um, they got that crack down there at the bottom of the lake where the lake is actually expanding, much like where new land is being formed in the ocean, which is a bit strange having that there at Yellowstone Lake. Again, this is Lake Butte, which is um, part of Yellowstone Lake. Here we have the monitor. It's a borehole, a very deep well, and it's at the north end of Yellowstone Lake. This is what it was showing when I pulled the files to make this. Yeah, screw waves, harmonic tremors. Yeah, the lines of melt, pockets of melt. And let's look at the signature because, yeah, look at all the activity that was going on. Yeah, they call it a screw wave, and they have that at volcanoes when magma is rising. And actually, magma could come up if it wanted to could come up in a matter of 10 minutes from um, deep in the ground through the mantle plume, what they call. Look at that. Look at all that. See? Screw wave, harmonic tremors. And there was a couple in red right there at 1151. And look at its signature for the spectrogram. That earthquake is not being reported when it is in red. The computer does that. That means the computer registered an earthquake and it's a signal for the uh, geologist, the scientist, to come in and review it. We've got another one in red. It's probably right there at 12.05. Also not being reported. And let's go up over here. Let's see. we got uh 1025 you see the gases yeah that's definitely an earthquake also not being reported we have another one right there not being reported at 935 let's look at the 4.1 earthquake and this is the line where it came in right there at yellowstone lake yeah definitely shook up the caldera Yeah, it seems to have shown up much better at Lake Butte than it does there at the monitor for Yellowstone Lake. Now, the monitor, like I said, it's a borehole, a very deep well, is up over here for Yellowstone Lake. Lake Butte is up over here on the right. Using Google search, here we'll zoom in on it. It says Lake Butte um, Overlook. And then it's got Lake Butte. Uh, let's see if I can get it to work. There you go. And they got some images here that you can click on to look at it. So somewhere over here, that's where the other monitor is at. And like I said, the uh, earthquake seemed to have recorded better here than it did at um, Yellowstone Lake Monitor, which is over here. 
So we'll cover the tilt, the ground either rising or dropping, and this is Norris Junction. B950, again, this is a very deep well under the ground. X is north, and Y is east. And remember, they had a period when they weren't recording the earthquakes, um, between the 3rd and the 4th, I think it was. And what they're doing here is monitoring what direction the magma is flowing under the ground along with the ground deformation, the uplift, when you look out from across the horizon. So X is north and Y is east. This is um, under the ground. And um, uplift is actually in the south for Norris Junction. All right, so we got then uh, the last 30 days of uplift that's going on at Norris Junction. And then we got the disk. So actually, the, the magma that's under the ground here is moving more of a westerly, southwesterly direction. And I've talked about how each dot is an earthquake that would either cause uplift or for the ground to subside. But if you look here, here they reset the machine. Yeah, it's breathing, going up and down, up and down. This is the last seven days. And then the last 30 days. Yeah, it's been dropping. At least for this borehole. Now, the borehole for Grant. Grant is on the west side of Yellowstone Lake. Again, there's the data that was missing. Lots of dots means there has been lots of vibrations, lots of earthquakes going on. Top is north, Y is east, last seven days. And the magma is flowing under the ground north, and also the ground is rising in the north. Last seven days, lots of earthquakes. And then we got the last 30 days. The tilt meter for Yellowstone Lake. Top is north. There's the gap where they weren't recording data. And it's been rising. This is at the northern end of the lake. Y is east. And the magma here is flowing east under the ground, more so. And then the uplift is also eastward, if you looked at it. Then we got the last seven no, last 30 days, excuse me. Yeah, see how it dropped down? Remember when I was telling you it was dropping, which was very concerning, and they had all those earthquakes that were occurring at the same time? Again, last 30 days. But in the last week, it started to rise again. The borehole for Madison River. Now, this is the area where they've been having, or they had that earthquake swarm. Top is north, bottom is east. See how it took a breath around the third and the fourth, and all of a sudden it stopped recording. And then we got the disk for the last seven days, uh, more so flowing on this monitor to the east. And they got two different plumes coming into uh, Yellowstone. One comes in from the Snake River Plateau, and then the um, other comes in from the Gulf of California. Here we got for the last 30 days. Yeah, each dot is an earthquake within the last week. And it's going up again. We'll look at it for the last 30 days for comparison. See, it's been rising. Now they have two monitors for the Norris Junction area. This is borehole 205 for the last seven days. Yeah, it's been rising. Taking a breath, breathing, going up and down. And there's so many earthquakes. Yeah, it just ends up looking like a big blob on the disk. Then for the last 30 days, it actually dropped. But once again, it's going back up. And they changed the settings. Here it's set at 20 microradians. Usually they have it set, oh, about five. This one here is set at two microradians. 
Here we have Panther, which is up by the border with Yellowstone Lake, which is near um, what they call the vault. Um, top is north. Lots of earthquakes going on. Bottom is east. Last seven days. And the magma is flowing under the ground going east. But if you look at the ground itself, at the horizon, it's actually rising in the west. Last seven days. And then the last 30 days. See how north is dropping, but east is rising. And they have this set at 20 microradians, where this one, they have it set at 2 microradians. The smaller the number, you get more of a close-up what's going on than the larger number. Now, yesterday, Steamboat Geyser went off. It's been five days since its last eruption, which was three days from the eruption before that. And you can see it's been fluctuating. This is the 17th eruption so far this year. Remember, last year it set records for how often it erupted. Doesn't look like it's going to do that again this year. Evidently, the power is out for the Norris Museum. So that's why we're not getting um, any new data for the earthquakes that are occurring there. And as you know, a lot of the buildings are closed. Uh, Yellowstone Forever has shut down because of uh, money problems, mismanagement, I assume. I did an article about that yesterday. So I have no idea why the Norris Museum is currently closed. But with Yellowstone Forever closing down, they're the ones that provides the money for the live webcam. If the live webcam goes down, there's some kind of malfunction. Who knows how long it would be down? Who knows um, who would come in and do the repairs? Um, yeah, they do have money, but they're claiming to be broke right now. Yellowstone Forever. Looks like we got a little buffalo right now. Um, so that's all I have for you right now. Any thoughts or comments or questions, please put it down below. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you very much for your support. Please stay safe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.